Hello everyone and welcome to the special edition of ET News. I am Dijon Jackson and today in studio for the celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, we have Mr. Miguel Melendez. Mr. Miguel Melendez is city council president and today he will be sharing his role and his thoughts on certain things in the community. Mr. Melendez, how are you doing today? Good, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Um, to start off, I want you to share your role. What does city council president do? Yeah, so that's a, that's a big question out of the gate. Um, so city council, we are a nine-member body. Mm -hmm. We um, focus on the legislation and policy of city government. Uh, we also approve the budget every year. And as council president, um, I oversee all the meetings, um, work with my colleagues to uh, really put together the calendar for the year, um, run, help run the committees. We vote every month on anywhere from 15 to 30 items for the city. Um, and I also chair the public safety committee for, for the city of Rochester. Do you feel like it's a hard job trying to like decide everything and vote on everything? I think you, you get all the information and you make informed decisions. And what I like to do is make sure that I'm checking in with the community before I make a decision, particularly on controversial issues. Um, but if you do your homework, I, I wouldn't say it's a hard job, but um, it's definitely uh, a huge responsibility. You're also the Chief uh, Community Engagement Officer of the Ibero-American Action League. Can you, tell me, can you tell me about that? Yeah, so Ibero is um, the largest serving Latino agency in upstate New York. Um, we certainly serve everyone in the community too, but um, my role as Chief Community Engagement Officer, um, I play various roles. I oversee, I, I say everything from youth to senior, right? So I have youth programs that are in schools. I have um, a senior center. I have a community resource center that's on Clifford Avenue. And um, that program has a case management, uh, migrant services right now for those that are newly arriving to Rochester. Um, and then I, we have a gun violence prevention program. Um, so there's a lot of different um, opportunities for us to impact community. And my role also focuses on the Latinx agenda. So we have a, a, a document that we produced that's really an advocacy document, um, issues in the Latino community, things like you know, language access services, um, education, bilingual education, public safety, and on and on, workforce development. And so um, we convene community leaders on a weekly basis. So every Monday we convene. And the, the, the role of that is to really bring people together to make decisions, to work together on policies, on advocacy. Some of the stuff I bring back to city government. Um, and the, the, the aim for all of this work is to really improve quality of life in the community. Um, so since you said you, uh, you work a lot with youth and seniors and uh, people that age gap, what is something like, what is some advice you tell them a lot? If you do tell them any advice. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, we, for, for young people, um, what, I, what I like to tell people is, is make, and, and I'll tell a little bit more about my story in a moment, but, you know, make sure you, you focus on what's in front of you, right? Um, we all have opportunities in this community. I know we have great challenges, but you got to look at the assets, the positive. And um, from my perspective, our young people um, are the future. As far as, you know, the education system goes, that's how far our city will go. So investing in young people, making sure that we have um, youth-based programming, um, intergenerational programming, that's something I'm a big believer in, making sure there's mentors in, in spaces. Um, so that young people can be supported, um, but you know when I when I grew up, I went to I went to East High School, um, and you know part of my story is that I, I lost my mother when I was nine, I lost my father when I was fifteen, so I had good, solid, strong mentors that helped me get through that. Um, I thought that I would be a high school guidance counselor because I had a good high school guidance counselor that got me through those right. those moments. Um, so you never know where your, your career will take you, you never know where your path will take you. Just stay focused on what's in front of you. So speaking on those losses, um, 
what do you feel like was uh, something you had to overcome, like getting to this level you're at now, and the position you are now? Yeah, I think, you know, those losses were big when I was young. Um, you know, my father always valued education. Right. And the reason he valued education was he dropped out of school in the seventh grade in Puerto Rico to work the family farm, the family land. And when he got here to, to Rochester, there were a lot more opportunities back then. You know, you didn't have to have a high school diploma or uh, a college degree to find a, find a job. But he knew that that was changing. And he always instilled in us that we needed to um, make sure that we were, were focused on our future. So when he passed, I mean, that, that really hit me hard. Um, I was kind of going, to be honest with you, I was kind of going the wrong way at one point. Um, after I lost my mom in middle school, had some, some major challenges, you know, got suspended a couple times from school. Um, but when my father passed, that was kind of the wake-up call. And that was the moment, I, actually at his funeral, I promised in front of, for me it was in front of the world, right? Cause I promised in front of my family yeah. that I would continue, I would get my education, I will go to college. So I was the first generation of, um, in my family to, to get my, my college degree. I was a first generation student at St. John Fisher University. Um, so that, that was a huge obstacle. I think as I got into my professional life, um, really not knowing my path, I mean, I, I think I, told, I said I was going to be a guidance counselor. Um, I went to school to get my degree in psychology. But when I got out, I was like, is this really you know, what I want to do? And I found myself at Ibero doing an internship when I was in college. And um, that exposed me to a lot of different ways I could impact the community. And when I graduated, they actually called me and said, um, you know, we, we got this, this small grant based on the work you did when you were here as a summer intern. Do you have a job yet? I said, no. And um, so they said, we want to come here part time. And I've been there ever since. So from a 22 year old kid out of college, I'm 37 now. I've been there 15 years. Um, so again, keep, keep your eye on what's in front of you. There's opportunities available. So you've been at uh, Ibero America actually for 15 years. Right? Yes, in, in the Ibero family. So I, I work for two corporations, so Ibero American Action League mm -hmm. and Ibero American Development Corporation. So I've been at the Development Corporation all 15 years and Ibero American Action League for about three years now. Okay. So in those 15 years, I would say you probably accomplished a lot for a lot of people. Is there anything else you want to accomplish or anything, any more goals you have? Absolutely. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with uh, young people in schools. One of the, one of the things I really want to do is uh, increase our, our footprint in some of the neighborhoods that we have, programs and services, um, after school type programming. Um, so, you know, we're working on that now, tutoring, mentoring, those kind of things. Um, so I want to expand those programs. Uh, I'm working now on also moving our senior center back to North Clinton Avenue. Uh, in, in, in the heart of the neighborhood over there. Um, so th there's a lot more than, than that, but those are kind of some key highlights right now that I'm trying to focus on. So speaking on youth, what was it like growing up in Hispanic culture as a kid? Yeah, for me, um, you know, my, my family was very close. Um, and we would, especially around the holidays, some of the, the memories I have, um, you know, we would have Christmas caroling in, in Spanish culture or in Puerto Rican culture, it's called parandas. And basically, you would show up house to house. Uh, it could be at any time. It could be at, it could be at midnight. And uh, you'd have to be ready to receive people, um, you know, people bring in their own instruments, sing, dance. Uh, usually, you had cheese and crackers ready in case someone showed up, maybe some coffee. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that, that was a fond memory for me. Another is that, you know, my family had an annual pig roast. Um, so. You know, you spend about eight, nine hours uh, cooking this pig all day long, um, and everyone takes a turn rotating it. So, you know, those are some of the, the fond memories I have within my culture. All right. Um, well, I just want to thank you for coming out today, um, coming thank to the studios, to sharing your input on things, sharing what the Ibero American uh, Action League does and what you do as city council president. I really, uh, really like that. But um, thank you for watching. This is a special edition of ET News. Um, all right. See you next time.